It doesn't really work for humans, but you do look like an idiot. Here's an idea. Zay Frank's True Facts teaches us a lot about how to make learning fun. Let's take a look at planet Earth for a moment. If you're like me, you're probably enthralled by the incredible views of our planet and have fallen asleep at least once to David Attenborough's soothing tones. No matter how cool the subject is, it just completely knocks me out. Well, even if it didn't, I'm not alone. And so many years ago, Zay Frank decided to make a parody of nature documentaries using actual footage but reading jokes in a Morgan Freeman impersonation instead of actually narrating the scene. The very first video, True Facts About the Hedgehog, released in mid-2012, and the re-upload from April 2013 currently has 5.5 million views on YouTube. The series was discontinued for a while, but it started back up again a few months ago. So following in the proud footsteps of our inspiration, the hype's all dead so we can talk about it now. The first True Facts video had precisely zero True Facts. Hedgehogs do not have moral courage and porcupines are not imaginary. I know, I know. It's easy to trust the man with the footage of the hedgehogs, but he was just making things up. As early as the second episode, the pattern of the show emerged. Much like the nature documentaries and parodies, True Facts gives a combination of interesting facts and descriptions of the animal in question. Unlike these nature documentaries, these facts are presented alongside a joke of some kind. For example, in True Facts About the Owl, True Facts About the Owl. Baby owls are called owlets, and they look like a cotton ball that grew a face and legs. Owlets are born without flight feathers, and because they are vulnerable, they camouflage themselves as muppets. While the humor is clearly the primary goal of the show, it is highly successful as an educational show too. A look at the credits of any of the post reboot episodes shows that Zay Frank consults with professional biologists and research institutes and uses high-quality documentary footage, this kind of collaboration would not work if True Facts somehow didn't manage to teach viewers at the same time as it entertained them. Now, it's hardly controversial to say funny things to be educational, but it's worth looking at why that's true, and how True Facts accomplishes it so successfully. To do that, let's look at some theory. In his work Camara Lucida, Reflections on Photography, the French media critic and sanitation Roland Barthes describes two reactions a viewer might have to work, studium and punctum. Studium, eagerness or study, is a little easier to understand. It's rational interest, the same reason why you might like nature documentaries in the first place. It's a desire to learn or interest in the thing being displayed. To quote, it is the state of liking, not of loving. For St. Frank, this would be clicking on one of his videos because you think the cuttlefish is cute or interesting. In contrast, the punctum, or pinprick, is some detail that captivates an audience member. What that exactly is will vary from person to person, and it's either there or it's not. If it is there, the whole image will stick in the viewer's mind, and whatever else there is can be remembered also. It follows that the punctum can be described as the emotional connection between the work and the audience. Imagine a piece of media as a ball. A punctum, then, is basically a spike coming off of the ball. Not everybody who grabs the ball is going to get stopped by the spike, but for those who are, that connection isn't going to fade anytime soon. Obviously, you can like something without personally having a punctum. It happens all the time. But it's helpful to think of that connection as a potentiality which can exist within any given piece of media. It's something that might exist, that can cause someone to engage more strongly with the work. Now, Roland Barthes is best known for coining the phrase, death of the author. The idea that a piece of media is only what the consumer makes of it. What the author originally meant simply doesn't matter. So it's no surprise she doesn't like intentionality in any form. Therefore, a punctum cannot simply be offered by the author. In fact, a punctum only exists as a connection between the consumer and the consumed thing. However, even though a punctum doesn't exist without the viewer, that doesn't actually mean the creator is out of luck. As we said, a punctum is something that might exist, and that potential can certainly be present without observation, and so we can use the term without giving out a hope of application. A creator can intentionally include many possible punctums, in hopes of attracting as many people as possible. This isn't the same as intending any specific punctum, it's simply casting a wide net of potential engagement. In fact, this is a very old idea. It's why Hamilton has both rap-heavy songs and traditional show tunes. It's why there are so many different mnemonic devices to remember the taxonomic hierarchies. For example, did King Philip come over for good spaghetti? In fact, it dates back to centuries before robots put it into words, with medieval books putting in weird drawings, like knights fighting snails, to make the actual contest more memorable. By giving a wide range of different standout features, a creator basically puts more specs on the ball, and if it looks enough like a sea urchin, lots of people are going to be pricked when they pick it up. So let's return to Zay Frank with these terms in mind. The studium is easy to spot, it's a funny educational show. The footage itself is a studium. But, however much I like animals and think they're extremely cool, and I do, there's nothing in the footage that makes me continue to choose to binge all of True Facts over watching Bark the Penguins. So that's where the humor comes in. While the style of jokes, a combination of reactions, weird analogies, and innuendo, would be a second kind of studium, each joke is its own potential punctum. If you see comments that call it a specific joke, that's a good hint that there was a punctum there. For me, it's the small call in the credits. In the video, True Facts Ant Mutualism, Zayfrank named the lead cutter ant that was not carrying lead to David. 
And then the credits give special thanks to David. As I said earlier, True Facts manages to be both educational and funny. This is how. The humor is something that offers many places for each viewer to latch onto. If that happens, the rest of the content is pinned in place by the Atlantic joke. And so the fact that Owls on Zag with Actel of Talons, or that the Bobbit Worm can turn his jaw inside out of time prey, sticks. I learned something, all while laughing at the narrator. As much as I like David Attenborough, that doesn't happen on Planet Earth. If you're creating something, make sure there are several somethings in it that different audience members can connect to. After all, that is how they say Frank do. Idea Project is an open access community dedicated to thinking critically about media in the style created by PBS Idea Channel. Everyone you see in the credits is just a volunteer from around the world who helped chip in designing this episode. We have a subreddit, a Twitter, and a Discord. So if you have thoughts or want to join up, edit, or just hang out with some pretty cool people on the internet, give us a shout. This episode of Idea Project was filmed in Studio B of the KBAB Studios at Beverly Hills High School in Beverly Hills, California.